When it comes to calico bass fishing out west, Captain Jimmy Decker's name is always in the mix. Whether he's fishing the saltwater bass angler events or guiding clients in and around the SoCal inshore waters, Jimmy's name always pops up. What some people didn't know is, not only is JD a great calico bass fisherman, but he's addicted to marlin fishing. He called me one day and asked me if I had any interest in going marlin fishing. I was stoked because marlin fishing off our coastline is very new to me. So to get the opportunity to understand the entire trolling process and have an experienced marlin fisherman explain it to me was a major bonus. You cast off your lines and head out. This is where the gear you run can make all the difference between uncertainty and confidence. Confidence to go further. Confidence to go short-handed. Confidence to go where the billfish are biting. Confidence to go past your curfew. Confidence to go beyond your expectations with Simrad, a name that's been trusted in navigation for over 60 years. Beginning with Simrad founder Willy Simonson, one of a handful of Norwegian engineers to work with new naval technology during the Second World War. Using his knowledge and expertise, Simonson made radio phones for the fishery fleet and created the first echo sounder for commercial use in 1950. Technology fishermen relied on to communicate, to get the job done, and to get back home again. It's a legacy of reliability and technical innovation we're proud to carry on. So whether you're going to the inner harbor, the canyons, or the far horizon, you can be confident that Simrad will get you there like no one else. Simrad, go with confidence. Lots of small pieces, much better than the big giant clumps. I see you looking back at your, uh, your depth finder and then you're looking to kind of see your, your depth of the macro. Right, like there's a big huge cloud of bait coming under the boat right now. And then, you know, it's always nice to know if you're at least dropping on something. Instead of just letting it go in the middle of the desert. That's mackerel right there, that stuff on the right hand side. Oh, yeah. Double header. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's three. Get a chance to use one, it's a good day, let alone three or four. Okay, so Jimmy, what's the plan right now? How far are we going out? We're, we're going to run to the bottom or the bottom of the tanker lanes, which is about, I don't know, 17 miles probably. Okay. Put them in there and then head towards the 277, which is the at the bottom of the ridge that runs off of the east end of Catalina. Okay. We're going to run a half hour or something? Yeah, probably right around there, 35 minutes, and then we'll probably hit that hopefully hit that 68 degree water and then just drop in the jigs and hope for the best. Uh, I just switched it over to chart and I'm going to zoom out and get a little track line here to where we want to start right here. I'm going to put the X down here about where the shipping lanes end which is going to be right about there. I'm going to look down here it's 19.2 uh, miles at 193 degrees so that's going to be our track to get out there, and then we'll probably put the jigs in right there. So I can zoom in, zoom in on that cursor, and you can see here's the spot. There's the bank, the tanker lanes in, those two little dots right there. So we're probably actually going to shoot for something about there. Yeah. And then dump them in. So we got uh, 18 miles. 
After I went out, I was so excited to get an opportunity to film a marlin so close to home. Once Jimmy got to his spot, it was just a matter of seconds before we started fishing. I could tell he was definitely an experienced marlin fisherman who knew what he was doing. My biggest question was, how in the world is he going to catch a marlin by himself if we do get hooked up? This is the starting lineup for this morning. Flying fish, swimmer in the rigger, another swimmer, and then some Hawaiian lure that my buddy gave me. Little pinky in the corner. This is the one that got the fish last week. You said you hooked a mako, is that right? Oh uh, yeah, we hooked about a 600 pound mako last week too. Probably bigger than that, I don't know. I'm not a good judge on those on those gigantic sharks. But it, it launched on you? It was large, yeah, but thank God it came completely out of the water and landed on the leader and snapped it. Get everything set up here at a nice easy speed and then Get it up to trolling speed. Yeah, I run everything pretty short, you know. Probably four and four to five wakes on my boat's pretty tight on the outriggers. And then I like to troll the, the flat lines actually real real close to the boat. But it's warm enough for the fish to be here. Yeah. You know, there's bait here, there's fish in the area. I mean there's been, you know, a couple fish caught every day for the last five or six days since I got mine. There was two fish caught last Friday and then you know, there was a couple down days and there was a couple days where there was, you know, seven fish caught, so. Boy, that is right on the line. Uh, the way it goes, the way that I was taught was, you don't want to be trolling into the sun, which makes it a lot easier to watch the jigs because you know you can see them real well behind the boat but when the fish comes up behind the jigs they're looking more into the sun into the prop wash and everything so they say you know in the morning when the sun's like this you know a lot of sun on the water you're a lot better trolling downhill so that when you're looking at the jigs unfortunately it makes it hard to see a fish come up in it but when they come up behind the jigs they get a really good silhouette against the uh makes sense against there so it's just you know I've been very fortunate to have been kind of led into the circle of the the big boat guys sure. and you know the, the the best thing about that is just you just got to pay attention when they talk there's certain guys that get fish you know just like anything there's there's the good guys and then there's the rest of them that are just continuously trying but when you get some information from the good guys, man, you you got to pay attention and put it to use. Little things matter, don't they? Little things make can be the difference between, you know, getting two or three fish in a season and not catching one. What is our uh, water temp right now? 69.3. Rodney just went through here. So That's nice. That's yeah, beautiful. So we'll beat this bank to death for a couple hours and hopefully raise a fish. We got one more stick to get ready, and that's probably the most important one. So, Roll back. drop back. A lot of guys take them through the nose, but a lot of times your hook will turn around and come back. So I like to, I like to go up, especially too if you have to make a, an aggressive cast. A lot of times it'll stay on there a little bit better. Swivel us a little bit out of the water, reel and clicker. We're fishing. Now you're talking about this tide thing. To me, I'm not, you know, too familiar what you're talking about. It took me a while to get it. At the top of the tide or at the bottom of the tide is the time they say, and it's pretty true, when the tide goes slack, the bait fish pop up come closer to the surface and the fish come up. So they're always talking about, you know, the tide change. They bite on the tides, either the bottom of the tide or the top of the tide. For some reason, you know, the tide goes slack, the big fish comes up and the fish come up behind it. And that's when you'll see a lot of feeders or, or guys will start getting their jig strikes. It'll be, you know, an hour or so before or after the tides. We have a pretty rolling tide. We had a we had a high at 7.30, and then there's a low real soon at like 11.30, quarter to 12. So we got, you know, three or three and a half, four hours of kind of just a gradual sloping tide. So hopefully 
that'll keep everything up a little bit and we'll get a shot or at least we'll get to see a fish. So it kind of relates to the bait then, huh? Definitely. Gotcha. You get in an area where there's bait, you know, you see the little saris or you pick them up on the sounder, you definitely want to keep working around in that area. What did you say about the uh, depth finder too, the Simrad system as far as you are keeping an eye on that with bait? Oh yeah, constantly. I have it set at 120 feet. So just so I can keep an eye on it, see where the bait is when I start metering bait. Is it 100 feet, is it 30 feet, 20 feet, you know, stuff like that. So, And you'll get eyeball stuff of little saris greyhounding around that either get spooked from the boat or fish comes up on. I try to drive the boat and more importantly, keep my eye on the jigs. Because you, a fish can come up and take a whack at a jig, but not pop the outrigger or pop the rubber band to get a zip, but he's there. And if you're not looking back there and can get the bait to it, you might miss four or five fish throughout the course of the day, or you think you just got popped off by a piece of kelp or something. So that's my favorite job when I get to go out with the boys on the big boats. I love to be run the cockpit. I like to be the guy that just sits and stares at the prop wash to see a fish come up in the jigs because somebody has to do it. Somebody, man. It's, you, it's number one. Number one most important job next to the bow driver is the guy that's watching the jigs. Because you can miss it like that, and that could be your only shot for the day. We'll run up here to, you know, another couple hundred yards where we saw it. We'll mark it and we'll kind of box that area and just keep our eyes on that, you know, start watching the jigs a lot closer what now. What does that mean when you see a jumper when he's just launching like that? What are, what are they doing? I have no idea. The, the guys say they're getting parasites off of their bodies. Some guys say they're just having fun, you know, like dolphins jumping around in the ocean. I I don't know what makes them jump, but what you want to see is a jumper that turns into a feeder that gets on some bait, and then those ones will, will usually bite. We're out here fishing with the big boys, that's right. Not in the center council. the little boats. Well, I can do stuff he can't, and he can do a lot of stuff I can't, you know. You know, we got the the bottom of the tides at 11.15. It's 10.02 right now, so hopefully this area that we've been working is going to come to life here over the next hour or so. We did see some Meet, jumpers. Just saw jumpers this morning. I'm starting to meter some bait finally. Uh, if a fish comes into the spread, even if it doesn't, you don't see it hit a jig, uh, you just want to get that mackerel drop back in the water as quick as you can instantly. instantly. Leave the boat in gear. If it's on that outrigger, I'll pick it up and just throw it off to the side of the boat, try to get it right back there to where the jig's at, try to get the fish to come off the jig and uh, and take the bait. Gotcha. You know, so you gotta you, ideally hold the rod up so you can see where your line's going into the water and try to get it right in front of the fish. You think you have a plan, but then as soon as one of the riggers goes off or you get a drop back bait to the fish, it, it all goes out the window. You mean you're pretty much living for the moment. What's the water temperature? 69.4, we just went across like a two-tenth break. And he said he got bit on the colder, or had the fish come up on the colder side, so we're actually on it right now. Definitely some bait around here. Okay, we're on the cold side. We raise the fish in here. Oh God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I got, I got the whole thing, dude.
jumping right next to the boat. We had all that line out. Now I wish it was 50 pound tackle. <laughs> there, that's a better angle. Right there. You come up right now. Oh, short bill. What happened to his face? Weird, he looks like he got his bill sawed off, huh? Right, that <laughs> <laughs> Woo, good <Jimmy> job <laughs> buddy wow wow hey john you on this one six five just shook one off at 14 and 04 on the flying fish okay I just released one at 14 and 04 on a flying fish Coggin. Congratulations, who is the angler? Jimmy Decker. Who is the Jimmy Decker. Stoked on Fishing Trip Tips is brought to you by Simred and the new NSO Evo 2. Low profile touchscreen, chart plotter, multifunctional display, GPS, chirp, and traditional sonar. Simrad, go with confidence. This being my first time marlin fishing with Jimmy Decker, I was all ears trying to learn as much as I could within a short amount of time. Right off the bat, it started with cat food. Make sure to catch a few greenback mackerel to use as a drop back bait when you see a marlin sleeping, tailing, or when it comes up slashing behind the marlin spread. Second, have a game plan on where you're gonna fish. Do some homework online and even get up to date and on time marlin reports from websites like jdsbiggame.com. Third, you better have some legit marlin lures for your spread. Fourth, get the best pair of binoculars and or glasses you can afford. You will be using them all day long. Last, make sure to bring your patience. The experienced guys will go days on end with no bites or signs of marlin. Then one day, everything comes together like it did for JD and myself. Nice going, Jenny. Congratulations, Jim. Yeah, you're a high man for the year so far. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you. Well, congratulations. You got pictures this time? It's all on high def video, okay? Congratulations, there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, buddy. Thanks. Stoked on hey, fishing. Jim. Nice going. You're on a roll. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. <laughs> How sick was that? Good job, Disco Punk. Thank you. <laughs> Woo!
And you had the camera going. So sick. Oh God! Oh my God! Oh my God! So sick. Oh my goodness. That's all I gotta say. That is going down as the first marlin I have filmed in our local waters. Right, on the small boat. On the small boat, that's right, that's why we're out here. On the center council, so you can get it done in the small boats out here, folks. You don't need the big yachts and the big boats to, uh, to catch a marlin off our coast. So, Jimmy right, Decker, getting it done on Stoked on Fishing. Stoked on right, Fishing! Well, whenever you're ready, I'll go ahead and take them. Dude, that was just freaking amazing! What a great thing to have the camera going right then. I mean, it went pow, and you were like, oh, sh bit. Incredible. Caught a marlin. Came out to catch a marlin and caught a marlin. Yeah. It's all that positive vibe we have. That's right. You know. And dude, that thing was good size. Like, oh, yeah, it was. Like, throw a number It was there. a toad. It was probably 160-ish. Thank you for saying that. I was going to say it was over 150. Sure. You know, it definitely, it definitely had some meat. I mean, it had a big set of shoulders on it, and it was long. Yeah. I mean, it kicked my ass. No, that was legit, dude. That was a good one. Whoop! That is just so bitching. Couldn't happen with a better guy on board either, yeah. man. Like, like you said, you never know. You can't plan it. When all hell breaks loose, it's just you just deal with it. Right. <laughs> don't the, the key word? Don't panic. Yeah not have been hooked in a better spot. Oh, I know. That thing was buried right in the corner of its mouth. It made for a good release. Yeah. That was a nice release. You know, the fish swam away really good, all lit up. What an amazing day. You know, we we had a short window. You know, I, I had a charter cancel today. I, I called Shay and asked him if he wanted to come out. There's been a couple marlin here. Sometimes they're here for six, eight weeks. Sometimes they're here for six or eight days. And you know, we got out here, as soon as we got here, we we saw a couple jumpers come up and it gave us some hope to stay in the area. I, I worked with a, a, a good friend of mine on another boat out here and he'd had me come into a different area that I wasn't working and said there was a good temp break. We came across it, we started metering some bait, trolled past a kelp patty, looked down at the graph, it was all lit up with bait and all the next words out of my mouth was, we're bit. Okay. To get a jig fish is, usually get one out of five or six if you're lucky. Keep it rolling. Yeah, Stoked on fishing. <laughs>